In this video, we are going to see an example of second order circuit. In this particular problem, we have asked to find out the voltage across this capacitor. Now let's look at the given question. The, uh, the question is asking, for the following circuit, the switch has been at position A for a long time and moves to position B at T is equal to 0. Find the output voltage V of T for T is greater than or equal to 0. Here we are interested in this V of T, that is voltage across this capacitor. Now the first thing is we have to write our initial conditions. So initially this switch, switch has been at position A for a long time. It means this capacitor will be fully charged and it will be treated as open. Okay. So if the capacitor is open, then the voltage across the capacitor at the initial state is going to be the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor because these two are parallel to each other. And if I find this one, that's going to be equal to this one. Okay. Now to find the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor, we can do the voltage division equation. Let's write this one. Vt0 minus is going to be equal to 12 times 2 divided by 3 and that's going to give us 24 divided by 3 that's going to be equal to 8 voltage so this is the initial condition now the current through the indu inductor in the initial stage is going to be zero because we know that the switch has been at position a for a long time and uh, it means there's no current flowing through this so the current through the inductor at the initial stage is going to be zero so these are the two initial conditions and we, we have to know what's going to happen after we flip the switch after we flip the switch, the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor doesn't change immediately. So current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor is still going to be the same. So we can say Vt, this is also equal to Vt0 plus and this is also equal to It0 plus. Okay, after that, now we are going to create a second order differential equation in order to solve this problem. Now in order to create the second order differential equation, you have to know these two things. When we have Vl, we can replace that VL with L DIL over DT and current through the capacitor we can replace that one with C DVC over DT okay so these are the two things we have to know now let's go ahead and create the circuit for this first because after we flip the switch we are only going to have this part because we are interested in voltage across the capacitor and after we flip the switch this part will go away so we are going to have this part alone let's draw that one here we are going to have the new circuit and in the new circuit we are going to have the inductor this is our inductor this is our resistor this is our voltage source and this is our capacitor now let's draw this one this is our inductor and the cap resistor and this is our voltage source and this is our capacitor let's write the let's write the values inductor is 2.5 henrys and the resistor is 10 ohm and the voltage source is 10 voltage and this this capacitor is 1 over 40 and this is what we are interested in V of T now here I am going to use the Kirchhoff's voltage law to create the equation and let's say the current is flowing in this direction let's call this one I of T and uh, we know that in Kirchhoff's voltage law Kirchhoff's voltage law says addition of all the voltage in a loop is equal to 0 or voltage in is equal to voltage out and let's call this one this current source x of t okay this is our voltage in so x of t should be equal to voltage across the resistor plus voltage across the inductor plus voltage across the capacitor and voltage across the resistor we can say i of t times r because v is equal to i r so i of t times r is the voltage across the resistor plus voltage across the inductor we can replace that one with l dil over dt L D I L over D T and voltage across the capacitor it's already V of T so we can directly write V of T okay this whole thing is equal to X of T and here what we are going to do is we are going to write try to bring everything in terms of V of T because we are trying to solve for V of T so we have to create the differential equation in terms of V of T now I of T to change the I of T we can use this equation C D V C over D of T in our case capacitance is 1 over 40 so we can replace this C with 1 over 40 then DV is VC VC is the current I mean voltage across the capacitor that's going to be V of T right so this is going to be 1 over 40 then also we have the resistor let's multiply that one to 10 10 ohm resistor then I of T is going to be DVC over DT I plugged the C already so DVC over DT that's going to be DV of T over dt okay and then inductor is given that's 2.5 henry's so this is going to be 2.5 dil 
current through the inductor is also same as i of t so instead of writing i l i can write this one as d i of t over d t okay i'm just going to keep the v of t as it is because v of t is we are trying to bring everything in terms of v of t this is already in terms of v of t so we don't have to change that one okay so this is the first equation and here you can see this is i of t so we have to bring this one in terms of v of t to to do that i'm going to use this equation again c to change the i of t into v of t we can use c dv of t over dt and if you do that let's simplify this one this is going to be just 1 over 4 dv of t over dt and if i plug this one we have to multiply this one with the capacitor that's going to be 40 so we are going to have 2.5 divided by 40 and here instead of d i of t over dt this i of t i'm going to replace so if i replace that one what's going to happen is this is going to become d square v of t over dt square and then here we're going to have v of t and if you simplify this one furthermore this is going to become x of t is equal to 1 over 4 dv of t instead of writing the writing the whole thing i can directly show you 2.5 over 40 that's going to be 1 over 16 okay so we can directly replace this one 1 over 16 now we have derived our second order differential equation but this is not in standard form because we have a coefficient in front of the highest order right so we have to get rid of that one to get rid of this 1 over 16 what we can do is we can multiply everything by 16 if we do that this is going to become 16 x of t is equal to 4 dv of t divided by dt is plus d square v of t divided by dt square plus v of t okay now we are going to write this one in decreasing order okay let's write this one in decreasing order decreasing order the highest order is d square v of t right that's the, that's going to be our first term d square v of t divided by dt and then the second one is going to be plus 4 dv of t divided by dt and the third one is going to be just v of t and anything other than v of t we move to the other side it's already other side that's going to be 16 x of t right 16 x of t okay so this is our equation now what we are going to do is we are going to find out the v of t right so in order to find the v of t since this is a non-homogeneous second order differential equation to find the solution for this one what we have to do is we have to use the superposition techniques v of t is equal to homogeneous solution plus particular solution to find the particular solution what we do is we treat this v of t as a constant and if you look at this one if the if this v of t is a constant what's going to happen happen is this one is going to be zero and this is also going to be zero then we are going to left with v of t and uh, i forgot to do one more thing when i multiply everything by 16 this was this one also 16 right so this one should be 16 right here so here we have to have 16 so from this one this is 0 this is 0 we are going to have 16 v of t is equal to 16 x of t therefore we know that 6 v of t is going to be equal to x of t and that's going to be the particular solution and we know that x of t is equal to 10 voltage so the particular solution is going to be 10 voltage now to find the homogeneous solution what we have to do is we have to create the characteristic equation and we have to equate that one to zero and here characteristic equation what we do is we we take the second order and replace that one with r square and the first order we keep it as r and whatever the coefficient in front of it we keep that one that's going to be 4r and then here we are going to have the number in front of it because here this is zero order so zero order we just keep the coefficient that's going to be 16 is equal to zero and if you solve for r you have to use the quadratic formula to do that if you do that you're going to get negative 2 plus or minus j 2 root 3 so from this pattern like after we derive this one when we have complex number this is going to be like r is equal to negative sigma plus or minus j omega d okay so these are the two terms we need because we are going to write our final answer in terms of this but before we do that we have to see what kind of system is this to check what kind of system we have to check our zeta value zeta is this value 2 zeta omega n you can see this is the standard form and uh, this zeta value we have to find this one out right to find this one out we have to need our omega k and then we can find out this one and omega value like you can see omega n square is the value in front of this y of t in our case v of t 
So omega n square is equal to 16. If omega n square is equal to 16, then omega n is going to be equal to 4. Okay, so this is our omega n value. And after the equation, we have to have k omega n square. So in our case, k omega n square is equal to 16. And if omega n square is equal to 16 and the k omega n square is also equal to 16, then k value must be equal to 1 because in that way only we can have the same values. Okay, so omega n is equal to 4 and k is 1. Then we can using this one, we can find our uh, zeta value because 2 zeta omega n is going to be the value in front of this first order. That's 4. Okay, then we know that omega n is equal to 4. So 2 zeta 4 is equal to 4. From this one, 4, 4 cancels. Therefore, zeta must be equal to 1 over 2. If the zeta value is less than 1, it is an underdamp system. So from this one, we know this is an underdamp system. So when we have underdamp system, the general, general solution for the differential equation is going to be this one. V of t, let's write this one as a different color. V of t is equal to C e power negative sigma t sine omega dt omega dt plus theta. Okay, this is our general solution. Now we can write our solution by using this one because we know the sigma value and also we know the omega d value from the derived characteristic equation. So we can write our answer here. Okay, so V homogeneous is going to be equal to C e power negative sigma that's going to be negative 2 t then sine omega dt omega d is equal to 2 root 3 so this is going to be sine 2 root 3 plus theta so this is our homogeneous value and we have the homogeneous solution and the particular solution so the general solution for this differential equation is going to be addition of these two okay so to do that i have to get rid of this part so let's get rid of these things okay because we need some space okay so let's continue right here so let's write our general solution for the non-homogeneous differential equation that's going to be v v of t is equal to homogeneous solution plus particular solution particular solution is 10 the homogeneous solution that's what we figured out that is c e power negative 2 t sine 2 root 3 plus theta okay so now we are not done yet because we have to find the c value and also we have to find this theta value in order to express the particular solution for this non-homogeneous differential equation. So to do that we are going to use the initial conditions. First we have Vt of 0 is equal to 8 voltage. So here we can apply that one, right? So if Vt of 0, like V of at 0 time, we know that uh, this is going to be 8. So we can write 8 right here. Okay, let's put 8 because I am using this one right here. I am applying this one. Vt of 0 is equal to 8 and at that time this is 10 and the time is 0. If the time is 0, e power 0 is going to be just 1. So this is going to be just c and then 2, 2 root 3 t. This t is 0 therefore this 2 root 3 times 0 that's going to be just 0. Therefore we are going to have sine theta. So 10 plus c sine theta is equal to 8. So this is one of these. And, uh, and the another one we can apply is we have to apply it of 0 it of 0 is equal to 0 and it we can replace this in that one with using this one this equation so this is going to be c dv of t divided by dt and we know that c is 1 over 40 let's write the equation so c dv of t over dt that's going to be here the time is 0 because at the, we are considering time is 0 so time is 0 c dv of 0 over dt is going to be equivalent to this one 1 over 40 and we have to take the derivative of this one and if you take the derivative this 10 is going to become 0 and here we are going to have negative 2 c e power negative 2 t and this is going to be a product rule because we have two functions related to t so we take the derivative of first term, first one and we keep the second one as it is. So this is going to be just sine square root of sine 2 square root of t, 3t and then plus theta. And uh, when we do the product rule, we have to do this one first, then we have to do the, for the second one. So for the second one, we keep the first one as it is. That's going to be c e power negative 2t and this is going to turn into cos. So we are going to have cos 
2 square root of 3 root 3 t right then plus theta and that's it and we have to do the inside derivative for this one too right so inside derivative is going to be just 2 root 3 so we just have to multiply this one with 2 root 3 and that's it and uh, that's it for this one now let's see so if I plug 0 for this one if I plug 0 because we are having dv of 0 if I plug 0 this is going to become e power 0 so we are going to have negative 2 c and this is going to be just 1 e power 0 is 1 then sine this is going to be 0 this time is 0 so this is going to be just sine theta right sine theta and then here we are going to have c e power 0 is again it's going to be 1 then 2 root 3 t that's going to be 0 and then cos theta remains c cos theta and then here we are going to have root uh, 2 root 3 multiplied so multiplied by 2 root 3 and that's it right now let's try to simplify this one so the whole thing is equal to 0 so from this one we can get rid of this 1 over 40 because if I bring this 40 to the other side 40 times 0 that's going to be 0 so we can get rid of this one and we are left with negative 2 c sine theta is equal to c cos theta so we can rearrange this equation like if I move this negative 2 c sine theta to this side this is going to be positive 2 c sine theta that's going to be equal to c cos theta 2 root 3 and from this one if we divide this cos theta root 2 root 3 in the other side right we can get or we can bring the whole thing because <coughs> or if we bring the cos theta and number to one side we are going to have if we rearrange this one we are going to have tan theta is equal to root 3 so tan theta is equal to root 3 therefore theta is going to be tan inverse root 3 tan inverse 3 root 3 is going to be 60 degree right 60 degree so we have the angle now we can go ahead and plug the angle right here to cal calculate our c because we are interested in finding the angle and also the c value okay now let's get rid of this part okay so here we are going to continue this one right here so this angle is 60 degrees so if I plug this one in this equation we know that uh, if I bring this 10 to the other side that's going to be negative 2 negative 2 is going to be equal to c sine 60 and sine 60 is equal to root 3 by 2 and if you divide this one by root 3 by 2 you are going to get c is going to be equal to negative 2.31 so we have c value and also we have this theta value so we can express our final answer okay so let's go ahead and do that so let's get rid of this whole thing because we only need the theta and c okay so let's write our final answer and the general solution for the differential equation we found out that is that is here right this is this is the one okay so this is our general solution for the non-homogeneous differential equation now we can plug our values v of t is going to be equal to 10 and c value is negative this is our c value and this is our theta value and c value is negative 2.31 so this is going to be negative 2.31 e power negative 2t then sine 2 root 3 t plus 60 degree and since the time is greater than or equal to 0 we have to multiply this one with u of t okay we have to multiply this one with u of t and that's going to be the final answer that's going to be the particular solution for this differential equation and this is going to be the voltage across the capacitor i hope this helps thanks for watching